Hello and welcome to Starside Chat, episode 24. I am one of your hosts, Zach, and joining me is Aaron. Hello! How's it going? It's going well! We're a week before the Game Awards. I'm sure we'll talk a little bit about it, about it during the uh, actual podcast, but I'm pretty excited for that. Uh, both of our semesters are wrapping up, so we're about to have a lot more time to play video games. I have still not really sunk my teeth all the way into red dead so i'm looking forward to doing that in the next month but same uh, yeah it's been good between the rest of this week and next week it's going to be like crunch time for the end of the semester but after that i'm looking forward to like really getting some time with red dead 2 uh and one of our stories has to do with the online which uh, we can get into, but uh, have you done anything interesting since last time we talked? Not really. I uh, I stayed in a hotel two nights. Uh, we there was a big snowstorm that happened, and I okay. had to I work in another city, and they were like, "Oh, we need you to work, and we don't want you to have to drive, so we're just gonna get you this room at this La Quinta." So. I stayed there, and then I woke up, and I got into the office before the snow started, and then the snow started, and it was crazy. And then I very carefully drove back to my hotel that evening and stayed there again. Uh, and then I came home. It's a, I can't remember the last time I stayed in a hotel, so I felt very fancy. <laughs> I like staying in hotels. Yeah. I, I don't know. I enjoy it. Plus, you, if you're Ross from Friends, you just steal all the extras that they give you, you just like bring there are not a ton of extras at la quinta's unfortunately I, you might have to ask for them yeah that's just a good point stock up i forgot a few things what what do you have and then you just <laughs> ask for everything what about you have you done anything interesting lately uh no just uh a lot of stuff for school and that's about it yeah yeah it's been one of those times in life so <laughs> Uh, but we can move into this week's news. So uh, this is a game I know you're very excited about. Darksiders 3 is out now. Yes, it is. I have played uh, Darksiders 1 and 2. Darksiders 1 I got for PC uh, way back in the day. I played on my laptop. And I actually used that game to learn about uh, Cheat Engine. Have you ever used Cheat Engine before? No. Cheat Engine is this program that you can use to make trainers, and basically you pick a variable in the game, because everything in the game is just a number. So for instance, like collecting red orbs was how you upgraded your stuff. So I knew I had like 100 red orbs or whatever. So you plug that into Cheat Engine, and it's analyzing the program, and then you get a bunch more red orbs, And then you put in the new number and it analyzes that and it finds the specific memory slot for whatever you want to change. And once it finds that, you can affect that. So I was able to give myself a ton of red orbs. And so I played that game by upgrading everything within like the first two hours. And I found it to be very fun. But uh, Darksiders 2 I got for Xbox 360, I think. And that was a lot of fun as well. But people are saying that... uh, this new one is very different. Yeah, I have not seen a whole lot about it. I played most of the first one. I don't think I finished it because I, I didn't buy it. I think I like borrowed it from someone. And uh, yeah, I didn't get around to finishing it. But it's very like God of War meets Zelda. Is that fair to say? Yes. It Well, the first ones initially uh, are super God of War or are super uh, Zelda-y. Because it's all about like collecting items. Like you even you literally get a hook shot, uh, and you even get like a portal gun, uh, and it's pretty fun. Like the puzzles get pretty interesting with all the weird uh, items you get. But um, well, like, and so it's also like the four horsemen of the apocalypse is what. Yeah, the, the art style about. is really cool, and uh, everything about it is just like. Very comic booky, I would say. Like it's very, it feels like a dark horse comic. Maybe it is based on some sort of IP, but I'm not really sure. I think some of the reason why it's getting some mixed reviews is because it kind of looks and uh, maybe feels like 
a, like a direct sequel. So it, was, it feels like the game that probably should have come out shortly after Darksiders 2. And that was like some time ago. Mm-hmm. And uh, it just sort of feels a little bit old, maybe. But I don't think that that's that big of an issue, especially if the art style is good to begin with. People are saying the new, like, it, I would say you're correct in comparing it like a combination of uh, God of War and Zelda. But this new one, people are saying, is a combination of Dark Souls and Zelda with like way less Zelda stuff. I think there's way less emphasis on item gating and whatnot. It's much more about like the combat more than the previous two were. The previous two, it was great. It was like you're every like two hours, you're getting a new crazy weapon. You can trick it out. It was like God of War where you can just like power up your Blades of Chaos or whatever. And you're just getting interesting new mobility mechanics. And this one to me based on like the footage I've seen is just about like perfecting your dodging and like sometimes you get new forms but it's not really about collecting like a crazy boomerang that lets you destroy a certain kind of door you know mm-hmm. which is kind of a bummer and I'm not sure how into this one I am I am because I liked uh I like the Zelda uh formula but I'll probably still pick it up because I'm somewhat invested in the story, even though it's a little convoluted, and I want them to make a fourth one. There are four Horsemen of the Apocalypse, and I'm very interested to see... I wanted them to be able to complete their story. Right. Well, and just because there's been so many games coming out, this is one of those that, like, if it had released in a time that wasn't quite so hectic for game releases... I think people would have been a little more willing to give it a shot, but the, right now they're seeing those mixed reviews and they're going to mm-hmm. be like, well, I, you know, I guess I won't waste my time if it's not going to be that good. I'll just keep playing all these other games. So that, And this could be something where like six months from now it comes out and it's like 40 bucks or something. I mean, it's on Steam, so it could very well be heavily discounted uh, in the summer Steam sale, and that's maybe where you should wait to get it because... It seems like, I don't know, I want this to do well, but I also realize that it's probably not going to. <laughs> yeah. Did they, did they do, like, DLCs for the past games? No. These are very old school. Like, these games grew up in a time pre-DLC, and I think they're still kind of stuck in that time. Yeah. Well, yeah, like you say, uh, it'll probably be on sale for the Steam summer sale, and that would probably be a good time to check it out if you're at all interested or if you played the previous two. But uh, since I did not really play much of them, I probably will not be picking it up. I Yeah, I'll maybe we'll do a video on it if I do end up picking it up, and I can we can talk about it. It'll be a, have been out for a while, but who knows? I mean, it is kind of a cult series, so we'll see. But... I'm interested to hear if you have played any of this Red Dead Online beta. Uh, Unfortunately, I've been too busy this week to get to it. I think, uh, what is today? As we're recording, is Thursday. So it's definitely available to us. They were sort of rolling it out in stages where the first day was Tuesday, and it was only for people who ordered like the expensive, like a hundred dollar yeah. ultimate edition of the Definitive game. Definitive edition. Yeah, whatever it's called. And then like uh, Wednesday and Thursday were for basically anybody who uh, had played the game uh, within like the launch window. Like Wednesday was if you played it on the day it came out, and then Thursday was within the first three days. Uh, and so, yeah, we're definitely within that window, so we could, we could be playing it right now, but, uh, <laughs> we're podcasting, so. We got and then, to. We got a podcast. We do. We got a podcast. And tomorrow, it's open to all players. So as this podcast is going up, it's, uh, Red Dead will be available, uh, for everyone to play. Uh, I did see a little bit, uh, but I didn't want to watch too much because it seemed like there was, uh, some story elements almost. Oh, really? Sort of as like an introduction to the whole like open world online thing. And mm-hmm. so I was like, I kind of want to experience this for myself. So I stopped watching it. But yeah, I watched a couple people play around. I know a couple of things like your your player character does not talk, which is a little weird. And there's character customization. Like you can make your character and the horse mechanics are different, I think, like 
uh, I was watching, who was I watching? I think it was the Game Informer. They streamed the day it came out. They were all, like four of them were online streaming the beta and they were taking questions and they were talking, like people were like, hey, like, do you have multiple horses? Like, uh, my horse dies really easily in the game. Like, is someone just gonna be able to shoot your horse? And apparently there's some sort of insurance system like they have in GTA five where you have one horse, like you buy insurance for the horse that like makes it immortal kind of, which is interesting. But uh, it seems like a lot of fun to just mess around with your friends with, but uh, I'm worried there is going to be like insane griefing. Yeah, I can see that. I always worry about that with games like this. Uh, So there, there is also the battle Royale as well. Is there, did they say that there was? Yes. So it doesn't have its own playlist. You kind of have to like, you load into a queue that is multiple different game types in the multiplayer, but it's, I think it's like 25 to 32 players or something. And it is that battle Royale, like shrinking play zone, but you only have a knife and a bow. And so, and that's it. Like there's no looting. You you start with a knife and a bow and that's the whole thing. It's sort of methodical, and silent type stuff okay so it's not like your traditional battle royale where you like go pick up uh more stuff and try to get the the best gear and the most gear and then you just go destroy everyone not that i have seen it and apparently you can't just pick the battle royale mode it's in a playlist with a bunch of others so you just have to uh select like i don't even know what it is like uh team play or something and sometimes you'll be playing a death match sometimes you'll be playing something else sometimes you'll be playing the battle royale but it seems not super well thought out not well thought out but like uh they're not really supporting it that much like it, they're not making a big push to yeah. be like check out our battle royale it's sort of just like it's also there yeah well i guess it's not like what you would think of as a traditional battle royale but so I guess it, it makes sense to not necessarily, you know, put it as like one of your front facing modes and be like, hey, check this thing out. Mm-hmm. But uh, the interesting thing that I found that they had posted in their their post about the the beta was it says Red Dead Online transforms the vast and deeply detailed landscape, cities, towns, and habit habitats of Red Dead Redemption 2 into a new live living online world ready to be shared by multiple players. Create and customize your character, tailor your abilities to suit your playstyle, and head out into a new frontier full of things to experience. So you can tailor your abilities. What do you think that That's means? That's interesting to me. I don't know. Another thing, I really, when I was watching... Uh the Game Informer people play, I wanted someone to ask the question, how does Deadeye work? Because it seems yeah. like it shouldn't be. It's basically like Vats. You know, you can't you can't have Deadeye. But I saw them having, I saw like a Deadeye meter on their cores. So like, I'm not sure what was feeding into that, you know? My only guess would be that you can activate it and then like tag places to shoot or like multiple enemies, but it just mm. doesn't slow time. Yeah, that's probably that's probably what it is. I'll be interested to test that because I yeah. mean, so what about this? Are you interested in playing it, or is it something you're not really looking forward to? Uh, I mean, I would play it. I'm actually interested in checking it out, but I part of me wonders if I should just like charge through the rest of the story before I get to any of that. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. I'm in. Uh, like right now it's kind of the farthest thing from my mind because i have so much else to do right uh for the next like week or so but i do think i'll play it i'm curious to see how much they support it and how much they sort of add to it over time yeah because i mean they've heavily supported gta 5s online but yeah that's like a place i mean i think we talked about this in a previous podcast there's so much you can do in a living modern city with like bank heists and like yeah. getting new cars and just like new weapons and how much can you do in the wild west you know yeah like it makes sense to have a racing mode in gta because yeah. you're like oh you got some cool cars to that you can do races with but like how many people are going to want to race horses yeah even in the story it gets to a point where i'm just like okay i've done a horse race before i don't need to do this again yeah but. I don't know. Uh, are do you are you thinking you probably won't play very much of it? You know, I don't know because 
I I also am very interested in the story, and I that's what I'm going to be digging my teeth into. But like as far as online worlds go, I'm more interested in the thing we're going to talk about next. Yeah. So why don't we get into that? Because I th- I think there's a lot of information to go over there. So tell us about Destiny 2's next season. Season five. Well, first of all, season four is coming to an end. The season of the Drifter. Season five. The season of the Forge is beginning on Tuesday, uh, November twenty. Uh, it has already started. Has it already started? That can't be right. Yeah, it says uh, according to Polygon's post, Destiny 2's fifth season, season of the Forge, starts on November twenty seventh, which was Tuesday. No, wait, but it says Black Armory will release on December fourth on PlayStation Four. Well, so the uh, the seasons and the like content are slightly different things you know oh, what i mean like the PV, the yeah, pvp yeah, yeah, yeah. seasons and that sort of thing so yeah so uh black armory releases on tuesday and that is the first one of these like faux not actually dlcs like season pass esque kind of things uh because they're moving away from story DLCs which we have talked about extensively and we think I think we've come to the conclusion that this is a good idea. Yeah. Um and so this is the first one. This is the reintroduction of like machine guns as a heavy weapon. They're adding some new uh exotics. There's new pursuits to do. They're every time they uh they said in this vidoc that they released every time there is a new uh like season, I guess they're increasing the power level by 50. So there's going to be a new grind. There's new legendaries. They did some in the thing we have in the show notes, which we'll link. They talk about some of the new exotics. There's like four new exotics and one secret one. Like that's an old one that's returning. There's new cosmetic items. There's new sparrows, new ghosts. It's, it's exciting. I, I have not played a lot of Destiny just because I've been slammed with wor- uh, work and school. And when I have time, I've been playing Red Dead. Yeah, but that's been the is... big thing for me. Like, I enjoyed Destiny 2 or, or the Forsaken DLC when they launched it. And I was super into it and I wanted to play more. But then I got uh, busy with other things because there's just been so many games coming mm-hmm. out. And like... You and I are like we both love Destiny, but we don't like play it exclusively. And you almost yeah. I mean, if I had the time, if I didn't sleep, I would definitely (laughs) play more Destiny. (laughs) Right. Yeah, you have to make some compromises somewhere, but but I I this is something I definitely am going to check out. I mean, in the coming weeks, I will become significantly less busy, and I can definitely see myself splitting my time between Red Dead and checking out, because we should definitely play. I mean, I enjoy playing video games with you, but I don't think I'm as excited to play Red Dead online with you as I am to play Destiny 2 with you. I mean, I definitely want to try playing some Red Dead 2 with you We will, we definitely will. Uh, But yeah, uh, between you, me, and Mike, who we bring up on the show quite often, uh, we should definitely jump back in for some more Destiny once... Uh, once we get a chance to because this this all does seem very cool and we're gonna feel like really far behind already yeah. <laughs> i think so i don't even remember what my power level was when i left but it's nowhere yeah, near 600 yeah i was gonna say i'm quite sure i didn't even get close to max level so but this is the thing though is like we stopped when we were hitting that wall and now that wall they've moved the goalpost, so it's gonna be that golden time that there always is in destiny where you're just constantly getting drops and your power level is going up like crazy yeah that is always a very fun part of it being able to level up really quickly although it is a little bit depressing because you're like i've got all this good stuff but now i can't use it anymore Mm -hmm. because i need to like pay to uh make it better but speaking of paying to make things better zach i have some rumors i want to talk about okay i feel like we should make a segment on this podcast where because the way I find the craziest rumors is uh, Google like recommends them to me in my like Google News. Yeah. But they're always from like sites I've never heard of, <laughs> and no one else is reporting these rumors. Uh, yeah, I get a lot of that too. But I find them interesting. But I don't know. So maybe this is like the Google News rumor mill or something. That doesn't really roll off the tongue. But if it was sponsored by Google, that would be amazing. Well, let's get on that. Let's figure. Well, I'll send an email. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
there was, I think it originated from a Reddit thread of someone who claimed to be in the know, someone whose name is Ruth Inic Cookie. But there are, it's rumors about the PS5. And they're saying it is going to launch in March or November of 2020. It is going to be an <laughs> eight window? core Ryzen CPU. What'd okay. you say? That's just like a big window. No, March. It's a large window. Yeah. Uh, it's going to have eight cores. It's going to cost $500. Uh, the thing I found really interesting, though, is it says additionally, the PlayStation VR is also getting a successor. The current version's breakout box is being moved inside the console, while the PS VR 2 will get a built in camera, probably for inside out tracking. Moreover, the new PlayStation Move controllers are in development, which I assume are going to be like the touch controllers or like the wands from the right. Oculus or the Vive. So I've been hearing pretty positive stuff about PSVR. Like it's definitely third as far as like I would say Oculus is first, then Vive, and then PSVR. But people who have PSVR are, VR are like into it, like especially Tetris Effect people have been talking a lot about and that uh, Astrobot people are saying is like such a great VR game and it's exclusive to PlayStation. And uh, I think they've seen a pretty high attach rate with PSVRs. Like I think they're calling it a success. It's definitely not a connect situation. And so I, the thing I am most interested in about, oh, another thing they said is uh, Death Stranding, Last of Us Part Two, and Ghost of Tsushima are all PS5 launch titles, which you had speculated uh, a couple of weeks ago. So, also, it says it's a monster, and it's 4K, 60 stable, all games. So that's everything that we want. It's everything that we want. It's got my uh, VR stuff, which I'm very into, and it's got a couple other things. I don't know. It's just a Sony crazy testing rumor. Some virtual reality gloves. I mean, yeah, the gloves as well. I mean, who can say? But I don't know. Yeah, I mean, all of this information seems to track with what like rumors and like sort of ideas that people have been having, you mm -hmm. know, within the industry and just like uh, gaming journalists and all of this that have been saying for, for a while, this all seems uh, pretty legit. Um, the March or November window, I want to, I would say it would probably be November just because that's usually when they launch new consoles, yeah. but well, I mean, the Switch launched in March. Um, yeah, but that's Nintendo. They sort of marched to the beat of their own drum. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, I think all... I don't. I guess I don't know when the other Sony consoles launched, but for sure the PS4 launched in November, didn't it? I don't remember. I bought my... I bought a the, the Destiny version of the PS4 that came out on the same day as Destiny, which was uh, September... So no, maybe it didn't. Yeah. May, so September 6th? Let me look this up before I sound stupid. But it had been months. It had not been a full year since the release of the PS4. Oh, yeah. So the PS4 launched in November of 2013. So Yeah. I mean, holiday season makes sense. Yeah. I feel like they normally do like their announcement earlier in the year, get everybody hyped for it, and then release it just before the holidays and... Yeah, and I mean, they're not going to announce it at E3. We know that. Yeah, I, I, people are still kind of wondering what to make of the whole Sony not being at E3 next year situation. And, you know, maybe uh, there were people that were speculating maybe they end up doing their own thing like a little bit after E3 and they just sort of... Uh, or maybe they just wait until... Um, what is it? PSX? And, if there is a PSX. Yeah, I mean, there's not one this year, but they could do one next year, and then they uh, pull a Nintendo and sort of reveal the PS5 with, like, one of those uh, trailers, like, remember they did for the Switch? It I want to say that was in December. Zach, I watched that trailer so many times. <laughs> I watched the trailer, like, a hundred times, and I also looked up like YouTube videos of people watching that trailer for the first time and reacting to it. I have that <laughs> music riff just like burned into my brain. Well, you're going to need to get ready to do all of that again for the PlayStation 5 um, next year around this time. 
I have another quick thing I want to talk about before we get into some TV news. Into the Gungeon, which is a game that I love a lot, and I have bought on Steam as well as the Switch because it's so I like it so much. It's a great little roguelike uh, with cool, like it, like it really mixes up gameplay with the guns you get, and there's like a significant skill ceiling, <clears throat> not ceiling, but like you have to be good at it. Like it's hard, which is something like not a lot of roguelikes can say. You're sort of just like I feel like with Binding of Isaac. You're just waiting for that perfect run where you get an insane combo of broken items where it's just easy. Whereas this one, regardless of the guns you get, like there is luck involved, but uh, you have to have some amount of skill. Anyway, uh, when Gungeons and Dragons came out, they set Advanced Gungeons and Dragons. That was their last paid DLC. They were going to put out another DLC, a final DLC. I don't think they had released any information about it, but. Uh, last week they came out on Reddit, the Enter the Gungeon Reddit, and they were like, hey, guess what, guys? We've been working on Enter the Gungeon for five years. We were going to do another DLC, but we have another game idea that we want to start working on. We already have started working on it, and it's a completely new direction, but it's something that Dodge Roll is the name of the company. It's something that we were really passionate about, and because of that, we're scrapping the final DLC, but... We've already done a lot of work on the final DLC, so instead of it be- being a paid DLC, they're just going to put out a final free update with around 20 new guns, like around 10 new items, some interesting new synergies, uh, a new character, uh, and just in general, just like a bunch of cool improvements, and it's all going to be 100% free, and it's coming to every platform, and then they're just kind of going to say goodbye to Gungeon and work on their new thing. But uh, this is something I'm pretty excited for, and we'll definitely do a video on when it comes out. Yeah, uh, we should definitely do a video on it. Uh, these are the the kinds of things that you do a video to teach me about. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, let's uh, we'll do that whenever uh, you we'll get a chance a pin to play in it. it. Yeah, I'll I'll let you know when this happens. I'm not sure. I don't know that they said. Uh... I don't think they said exactly when we can expect it, but I would assume sometime in 2019. Another little thing that I realize I'm realizing that we did not have in our show notes that actually broke earlier today. The anthem closed alpha begins next week, and you're going to get in on that, right? Because you have the EA pass I or think, whatever. I'm not sure. I like for sure if they do a beta, I'll probably be able to get into that. I'm not sure about the closed alpha yet. I think you do have to sign up for registration or whatever it is, which you can do if you look it up. Just Google it, and there, there's like signups that you can do. Uh, it's December eighth and ninth. Uh, and yeah, you can, uh, go ahead and play some Anthem, which seems very cool to me. Uh, there's going to be a trailer at the Game Awards. Is there a new yeah. one? They said that. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, so you'll, you'll have to sign up with, uh, the EA community website, which I can link to in our show notes. But yeah, that's a, a cool thing. If you're interested at all in Anthem, definitely go check that out. Zach, you don't have Netflix. Uh, I do, actually, for the moment. What? Yeah, I re-upped it uh, specifically because I needed to be able to write about Netflix stuff for a thing I was doing for a class. Well, I bet you're pretty glad you have it now. I am, yes. Zach, they have announced a live-action version, a 10-episode television event on Netflix, a live-action Cowboy Bebop. I am very excited about this. I like Cowboy Bebop quite a bit. Of all the animes that I've watched, and I've watched a lot of them, I feel like this one is the one I think would transition most well into an Americanized Netflix-style television show. Yeah, I can see that. I mean, a lot of people have said online it's basically Firefly. Yeah, exactly. Which is another reason why I really like it, because I also like Firefly quite a bit. But if we're not going to actually get a a Firefly like reunion or like a movie or like a, you know, a reboot of that, at least we have this. And I think it's going to I for a long time, Cowboy Bebop was going to be optioned as a movie and Keanu Reeves was going to be Spike, which I was kind of into. But I think any any narrative thing like any if it's a book 
or a comic book or an anime, I think I want it to be a television show and not a movie because yeah. just like there's so much dense storytelling in things that aren't movies yeah. and there's just so much room for world building, I guess. And just like, cause this is going to be, I assume 10 hour long episodes. Yeah. So that, that's a thing that I've talked about with, uh, friends and family in the past where like we might have like games or shows from the past that we like a lot that we would love to have, like put on screen as like a movie or a TV mm-hmm. show. Like I was talking with my brother a lot about how we want a Mass Effect TV series Ooh. because we don't want them to do a movie. There was rumors for a long time about how they were trying yeah. to work with, you know, Hollywood studios to get a movie made based on the original trilogy or at least mm-hmm. like the first uh, game. And I was like, it, it wouldn't work. And a lot of the reason a lot of the reasons why games don't really translate very well to movies uh, and they the games or movies based on video games tend to be very bad is because they don't really serve any audience. They, they don't really fit the gamer's expectations because there's so much world building and there's so much like mm-hmm. side stories and so much uh, little details to what their experience was with that thing that when it's in a movie, you just all of that is stripped away and you're getting the most like bare minimum version of that. So it's not exciting for gamers, but it also doesn't appeal to the audience who has never experienced this in the past. They have like no reason to watch it at all. So it needs to be a TV show where you have time to flesh that stuff out. Like when you think about like my example of mass Effect, like there could be entire like episodes devoted to like the geth Quarian situation. That's yeah. like almost its own, you know, uh, Battlestar Galactica style show and there's like so much of that stuff that you couldn't do in a movie you would just have to strip that away because you don't have time for it and so the same thing applies here I want them to do a TV series so that they actually have the time to actually devote to world building and this was a TV show anyway so you might as well do another TV show you want those one offs you want that Geth Quarian you want just like an interesting one where they're hanging out at the Citadel. And like, as far as this goes, like I assume, I don't know. It's a good question. Do you think they all come together in episode one? Or do you think it's like the anime where first they pick up Faye and then eventually they pick up Ed and there's an episode with just where they acquire the dog and there's one offs like, uh, Oh man, what was that crazy one with that guy? who could fly he was like a fat french guy who could fly and he was always grinning he had like a bunch of weird uh like bionic stuff in him and he was like uh fighting spike do you remember what i'm talking about it's been a while since i've seen cowboy bebop and i sometimes mix it up with uh what's the other one trigon outlaw star uh, outlaw star oh another classic yeah i sometimes mix the two up in my head so i don't remember but but yeah i want those one-offs like um, 10 episodes I feel like I don't know if it was a 23 episode thing which I know is unheard of for Netflix then 100% there would just be like crazy zany episodes where like like the fridge episode where there's like a, a monster in the fridge yeah I would love it if they would do that I think they probably will hopefully stick to the way they had kind of done it in the past although I can see them like jamming everything into like the first episode to introduce you to everybody but they have the time for it with the tv show so yeah they just announced the production we don't know when this is going into development there's not even been any casting news but zach we have to play devil's advocate for a second because my favorite book series is altered carbon and Mm, they made some yeah (laughs) mistakes that's true uh we were gonna do an entire episode uh about of I guess we could call it a Starside Flicks episode where we just go into how bad Altered Carbon is and how much it It, got wrong. Like, the first six episodes were decent. Yeah. Except for their dumb thing about how envoys are anti 
stack technology. Which is but when they introduced of yeah, the book. It is the complete opposite. And when they introduced his like stupid sister plot line, it was just like, come on. But getting back to Cowboy Bebop, do you, like how likely is it that there is like a love plot between Faye and Spike? Oh gosh. Uh they probably will do that. I guess it depends on who's in charge of this. Good point. Um, because I, I well, don't remember. So, uh, Watanabe, Watanabe, who is the original designer or like creator, is like a consulting producer, I think. But I don't know how involved he actually is going to be. Yeah, that's a that's a good point. Because uh, didn't uh, what's his name, Richard K. Morgan was like in sort of involved. Uh, or like he was also sort of a consultant on Ultra Carbon. He Garden, was, but he a was little like bit. okay with whatever they did with it. Yeah, he's just happy that people like his IP, and he's just like having a great time. What yeah. like regardless, he's like he doesn't just, care. Just take the name and do whatever, and they basically <laughs> did, and it did not turn out good. You know, this is also I'm remembering because didn't Netflix say they're also developing a Sword Art Online live action series? I think I remember hearing something like They're going that. crazy, but here's the thing about that. The Sword Art Online one is being developed by the producer that produced the Altered Carbon series. Oh, gosh. Well, but I don't think that producer has their hands in this. So but I, I don't know. I've, I've seen a ton of hot takes on the internet this week about this. I heard a like crazy number thrown out uh, the other day. I was talking with somebody about how much... Uh, like original content Netflix is producing and they were Mm -hmm. saying they had like plans for like over 600 like properties TV shows and movies and stuff like that and I was like how can you like so much of that is just going to get like lost in the weeds like you're (laughs) yeah like is that even smart to like throw all this money at all that content and just like how much of that is going to be like visible to people tuning into Netflix because they they can only see so much of this. I don't know. I mean, it's it's a little bit of a thing where they can't have people unsubscribing, so they need new stuff almost on a weekly basis. Well, yeah, but then you have like HBO that has far less content that they're like constantly throwing out there, but what they do put out there is like it's an event. It's like super. Uh, it's event television. It's like this super significant thing that everybody mm-hmm. is talking about and everyone tunes into. And they definitely get subscribers uh, when like Game of Thrones or uh, Westworld is airing. Like they'll right. get people to come back and subscribe to it. Whereas with Netflix, uh, I couldn't even tell you the name, the names of like the last 20 shows that they've just thrown up on netflix and nobody's ever even heard of yeah i'm trying to think of i think the last one the last one i i'm trying to think of the last like water cooler oh it was you told me about it it was that uh scary one i didn't want to watch oh yeah the haunting on hill house or something like that not interested yeah but people uh... (laughs) people love that show they they're saying how good it is but yeah i'm kind of with you where i'm a little too chicken to watch like scary scary stuff so but yeah i mean it is crazy because i think hbo definitely benefits from being a legacy product like before the internet there was maybe not before the internet but like hbo was a thing unto itself and so people still view it in this way and I think you're right that people sometimes like let their HBO subscription go until like the next season of Game of Thrones comes on or like Westworld. But I don't think a lot of people are doing that with Netflix. I think they're keeping it because there's such a dense catalog of stuff because I think eventually. Then is there the need to keep like, you know, sending out 600 new shows every year? I think. They want to get to a point. I think Netflix's ideal is not licensing stuff. They, I mean, it's cool that they have just go like they used to have Thirty Rock. Yeah, they want to go all original. They want to build because what you know the thing they're going to compete against in like four or however many months is that Disney Plus, yeah. which is everything. You know, like they have Disney with ABC has gonna. It's going to be such a dense catalog of stuff. Netflix is going to have to compete, so they just need to be cranking stuff out while they still have the market share. 
Well, I mean, even HBO is like they have movies that they didn't didn't produce. Like they're not original programming that you can go on HBO now and watch. So, I mean, there's uh, they have a lot of their their stuff that's available is their own content, but they have other stuff as well. Well, but this is a good point, though. Have you ever watched a movie on HBO? Uh, I've wanted to, but I haven't. I feel like I the only reason I buy into streaming services is because of the television content. Like, if I want to watch a movie, I'll just like get it on Google Play. If it's on Netflix, I'm going to watch it on Netflix. And yeah, not I mean that's a good point. If Google it's free, Play. I'm going to watch it for free. But yeah. I don't know. I feel like uh, more and more the reason, like especially Amazon Prime is another thing where I couldn't even tell you what free streaming movies are on Amazon Prime, but I know that uh, I can watch, uh, what is that, Space one? TV show? Yeah, the Space TV show. The Expanse. Yes, I can watch The Expanse on it for sure. And you should watch The Expanse. I know. I need to get back to that. I've just been, this semester has been insane. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I don't know. I know Amazon Prime's, like, interface is not that great, and, like, it's never quite clear, like, you're looking for content to stream. You know how with Netflix it's very easy to just, like, cycle through the movies and be like, oh, here's Mm -hmm. one I might be interested in watching, and you just, like, well, now this is movie night and this is what we're watching. But on (laughs) Amazon, you're like, oh, that looks interesting. Oh, I would have to rent that. Well, I'm not doing that, so you back out. Yeah, it's out so of it. convoluted. Like, I they need to just like have a button where I can see like what is everything I get for free with Prime yeah. that I don't need to pay an extra money for. And maybe there is that. Like, but. I guess they have that little like tag in the top corner that says Prime, which is supposed to be your in- indicator that that's something that you can watch for free. But it's all like mixed in with stuff that's rentable, and mm-hmm. so all of that kind of gets in the way, and you just sort of are like, oh, I want to see that. And they're like, oh, I have to rent it. Never mind. <laughs> I also think that, like, I'm trying to think about, does HBO produce its own movies? Because I know Netflix has produced a ton of, like, they produced that Mute movie with uh, Paul Rudd was in that. I didn't watch it, but I heard okay things about it. Like, Netflix is producing movies on a year-to-year basis, whereas I don't know that... Amazon or even Hulu. Well, or Amazon HBO. Prime for sure is because a lot of theirs is getting like gets award nominations. I don't movies know movies or TV shows. Movies. I don't know that. Um, I don't know that HBO does. Maybe they do. They I'm, must. They must have. I feel like. Oh, you know what they do? They do documentaries. Oh yeah, I can see that. Uh, I would have to look it up, but like, let me. I will prove to you. Hold on. <laughs> I remember the first Netflix movie I remember hearing a lot about was that, uh, oh man, it was that one about like child warriors. I think it was, I can't remember the name of it, but everyone's like, oh man, this movie is so good. Uh, Again, it's just so like, their stuff is so convoluted to try to Mm -hmm. like scroll through and find what you're actually want to find. They have a lot of content. And a lot of it is stuff that I want to watch. It's just for some reason Netflix uh, is always the thing that like pops into mind first when I'm like, what should I watch tonight rather than Amazon Prime? And I think it, I think they've worked hard to do like it's it's that throwing everything at the wall kind of to see what makes like for every ten shows they produce, one of them hopefully is going to be a Stranger Things or a House on Haunting Hill or whatever like. They have the money to fail. They have the money to try new and interesting things, which I think is good. Oh, here we go. So, let me see. So, have you heard of that um, Joaquin Phoenix movie, You Were Never Really Here? That came out earlier this year. Oh, was that an Amazon movie? It was. And then Wonder Wheel with uh, uh, Kate Winslet and... I don't know Wonder Wheel. Wonderstruck and Chirac. Oh, Chirac, I remember that. Yeah, and um, Elvis and Nixon. I don't know what that is. And what was that movie that was, like, nominated for Oscars and it was, like, the first one with a female director nominated for, like, Best Picture? 
Ladybird? Yes. I'm pretty sure that was also an Amazon movie. Zach, I have a little side story. Uh, you, you know how I started working at a video store? Yeah. A lady called me and uh, she was like, I want to know how good you are at guessing movies. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, oh man, I'm I'm geared up. I'm ready for this. I'm going to figure it out. And she was like, it's a movie with George Clooney and Mark Wahlberg and they're on a boat and it's like there's a big storm. The perfect storm. Yeah. Like that's, how can you not know that? <laughs> she said the word storm. Yeah, she literally said it. <laughs> And I was like, oh, it's Perfect Storm. And she was like, oh, you're really good. And then she just hung up. <laughs> I, I bet you this is like completely out of context. She was like talking to somebody and they were like, what's that movie? Oh, I'm going to call up the video rental store and quiz the guy and he'll tell me. I wanted it to be so much harder, but it was just like so easy. Yeah. Like, you know, you have a, probably have a phone or a computer somewhere that has Internet. It, I mean, well, this lady seemed very old. Yeah, I guess. Um, transitioning, though, to other streaming services, something that I have always subscribed to is Crunchyroll. And I want Crunchyroll so bad. You make me sad every time you bring it up that I don't <laughs> have it. They're partnering. This is unheard of. They're partnering with Adult Swim. They're jointly producing a new Blade Runner anime. Did you watch the prequel? I did, and the, it was awesome. It was great, right? Uh and I think this is going to be great, too. This is still early stages, but uh, if they keep the same tone, like, I want more Blade Runner, so this sounds great to me. Yeah, I would love it if they would do this and it would, like, sort of build into the next Blade Runner movie. Oh, my God. Because uh, I would be cool if Denis Villeneuve wanted to do another Blade Runner movie. He's making Dune, though, isn't he? Probably... But I mean, I would. I really want another Blade Runner movie. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll we'll definitely. Maybe we should do a star side flicks on just this TV show when it comes out. Yeah, that would be fun. I need to get back on Crunchyroll because I I also like I've been listening to the Persona Five soundtrack again because it's so good and it's <laughs> really made me want to jump back into the game. And I was like, you know, I could if I had Crunchyroll, I could be watching the anime right now, but yeah. can't do it. Um. Moving along, because we're running a little heavy on time, uh, we have both started playing uh, Pokemon Let's Go. Did you get Eevee or Pikachu? I got Pikachu. I got Eevee. Ooh, so that we can trade the exclusives. Well, yes. I mean, we could just use Pokemon Go. <laughs> I mean, I did. one of the reasons I got Pikachu was because one of my favorite Gen 1 Pokemon is Growlithe, and that's one of the exclusives to the Pikachu Ooh. edition. Uh, so how how have you been liking it? How far are you? Uh, you so caught them all. I ha have not caught them all. I need to do some transferring from Pokemon Go in order to pull that off. But I have taken down the Elite Four and caught oh, the Legendary Birds, but I have not caught Mewtwo. And I, I sent this out on Twitter. It actually feels like one of those games that kind of opens up after you sort of finish the equivalent of story mode. Mm -hmm. because um, you can go back through the gyms and challenge them at a higher level, and you can go back through the Elite Four also at a higher level. But there, a thing that they added, at least I'm pretty sure this is an, an addition uh, from, you know, Pokemon Yellow. Which, by the way, I should say, th I the only main series Pokemon game I've ever played is Pokemon Yellow, and this is a remake of that. And I've also <laughs> played Pokemon Go, so the blending of the two is kind of like the perfect, like it's my jam. So yeah. Uh, but anyway, they added this thing where after you beat the Elite Four, you uh, can go around, and there's like for every Gen One Pokemon in the game, there's like a master level trainer that you can go find out in the wild and challenge them to. Uh, and if you beat them, I, you get some stuff or whatever. But it's like another sort of challenge or whatever to to complete. And obviously, there's like 155 Pokemon in uh, yeah. first gen or something like that. So if you have to, like, have all of them, but also have them at, like, I don't know, high-level Pokemon, um, that's a lot of grinding to do. 
So Yeah, for sure. Like this game will keep you busy for hundreds of hours, I feel like, <laughs> if you really wanted it. So how how have you been enjoying it? I just started like and really, my girlfriend is playing, and I'm watching her. But uh, I, the music is great. You should and I, you should grab the other Joy-Con and you, yeah, I will. Gone. I need to do that. Uh, but I've been, I've been really enjoying it. The music is great. All the Pokemon are so lovingly modeled. Yeah, uh, it's I I can't tell you like having played Pokemon Yellow and then seeing that entire world and all the music <laughs> just like updated into like modern game is like. It's pretty amazing when you, at least when you first look at it, you're like, oh man, this is so cool. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm also really enjoying it. Um, Zach, we, we talked about it briefly, but the game awards are happening next week. Do we want to get into the nominations? No, I think we don't have to do that. But I did want to mention that I think Obsidian was teasing they're going to unveil something, a new IP possibly at the Game Awards. Also, I heard a rumor that Rocksteady, the guys who made the Batman games, are going to unveil a Superman game at uh, the Game Awards, which seems crazy. It does. I don't know how into that I am. I, not because Rocksteady doesn't make great games, because they do, but I'm just like not that into Superman. Yeah, they'd. Ha- I don't know how they would pull it off, because he's just like such a beast. Like, you can fly, and you're just like super strong. Like, well, they would have let to- me tell you, there's going to be some kryptonite in there somewhere. I mean, you're 100% right. Spoilers <laughs> for Superman, uh, Kryptonite. Um, but anyway, we'll have tons more to talk about that post that. Um, let's talk about movies, Zach. Yeah, we don't have to talk a lot about these because I don't, I don't necessarily need to get into deep thoughts on all of these. But I, over the Thanksgiving break, I got caught up on some movies. I... I don't remember if we linked to the Starside Flix blog that I set up for to be sort of a, an extra thing for this, but I did post some thoughts on some of these for there. Uh, but I watched The Meg. Did you see that movie? Zach, I did watch The Meg. I watched it on uh, Thanksgiving Eve oh, or night. We must have watched it like a day or two apart from each other without <laughs> even like coordinating that. What, were, what did you I loved think? It. I thought it was great. I also watched uh, Skyscraper, and even though I love The Rock, I think I liked The Meg better. Uh, yeah, I I enjoyed The Meg. It's like one of those dumb, fun movies that's just it's so like good. it's just like embracing sort of silly, over the top, um, fun adventure or whatever. And so I enjoyed that. I also watched the Netflix exclusive coen brothers movie the ballad of buster scruggs Uh, i have heard nothing but glowing reviews of this it's very good i it's probably the best looking western i've ever seen just the cinematography of it it's just like it's a it's gorgeous to look at but it is like an anthology movie so it's kind of not um it's not my favorite style of thing i don't really love anthology stuff yeah um the what i would recommend to you because i also think you would find some of the stories in there a little bit of a bummer i would say watch the first one that's like i don't know how long it is in terms of runtime it's not terribly long but it's the the one that's sort of the title um story and Tim Blake Nelson plays Buster Scruggs and he is hilarious. He's great. And like the Coen brothers are sort of wordsmiths where their writing is just like so, so good. Like they can turn a phrase like nobody else. And just like between Tim Blake Nelson's performance of that character and the dialogue that they've written for him and the songs that he sings, they're like very clever and very funny. Uh, And he's also like this, He's like this singing cowboy who looks like he's from a movie and everything else around him is like very serious and dingy (laughs) Western stuff. So he he looks really out of place and he keeps like walking into situations where people like don't like him just looking at him. And so they end up having to, you know, draw their shooting iron or whatever. And (laughs) he's also like this world class gunslinger. So it's like. 
I don't know. It's really funny and really good, and you should watch that one and then turn off the movie. <laughs> That's my recommendation to you specifically. I think other people will enjoy some of the other stories, but that one's definitely like the best of all of them. Duly noted. You also watched The Quiet Place? Is that the John Krasinski one? It is. John Krasinski's... I, I don't think it's his directorial debut, actually. I no? Think he, I thought it was. I think he has directed something else as well. An episode of The Office. Well, I mean, that, but, like, I think he did, like, an indie movie a few years ago that, like, nobody ever heard of, but hmm. um, this is definitely his biggest directorial effort. Uh, Zach, I have one question for you about this movie. Okay. How are the monster designs? Because they don't show them at all in the trailers. Do they look cool? Yeah, they look kind of cool. Practical or CG? CG. Very definitely CG. What do they look like? I'm trying to think of a good comparison. Do they have giant ears? Do they look like elephants? No, it's, it's hard. They are kind of spider-like, but oh. they have these like round heads that have that kind of I can't even explain it. You just have to see it. Like it's a weird thing. I don't even know why I can't explain it, but like they have like these plates all around their head and they like push them out and back in again and it's like it's really weird. You, like it would make sense if you had seen them and you knew what they looked like, but I'm not describing them well at all. But yeah, they do have Did these like ears it? that like can hear things really, really well. Uh, Did you like the movie? Yeah, I liked it quite a bit. I thought it was really good. I heard they're making a sequel. Did it line itself up for a sequel? Uh, yeah, I could see them doing that. I think you should watch it though. Yeah, it's on my i. I think I will watch it eventually. It like initially I was like, oh, this looks too scary. But then I read some reviews and they were like, oh yeah, it's not like a big shocker like horror movie. It's more just like tense. Yeah, yeah. It's more of like a monster movie, like a thriller. It's not it's not like a horror movie. Like there are some tense say, situations, but I like Emily Blunt and I really liked that Tom Cruise movie with Emily Blunt, uh, Edge of Tomorrow. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. But uh yeah, this is something I might check out. You should definitely check that out. The other thing I have very mixed feelings about this. Um it is a YouTube original series called what? Origin. So you, what is this? YouTube, if you are subscribed to uh, Premium, YouTube Premium, what do they call it now? YouTube Red. I mean, it was YouTube Red. I think it's Premium now. Oh, I don't. I I do not care to subscribe to this, but. Well, I mean, I am subscribed to it for the music and for the no commercials in. Uh, whenever you're on YouTube, but mm -hmm. you also get access to their original programming. And I watched that Cobra Kai show, which... Oh, I remember you telling me that. Yeah, it was pretty decent. Um, Origin is, like... It's nice to see them, like, actually getting, like, Hollywood-level talent and, like, giving them a big enough budget to produce something that's sort of on the level of something that you would see on, like, Netflix or Amazon... Uh, so I would love for them to do more of that. And I, th for most of this show, I was with it and it was like really good. Uh, but there is an episode towards the end where things kind of become a little bit unbelievable. And it's, what is it about? This group of people wake up on a spaceship. Um, they're traveling to this they're like going to go colonize some planet way off out like light years away from earth and they wake up and like everybody's dead and they're trying to figure out what happened, what's going on. And, um, there's like, there may or may not be some like alien creature on board and they're trying to figure out. Mm. Um, so it, it's kind of like it sort of wears its um, inspirations on its shoulder a little bit because it's like lost in that it's got a bunch of people who don't know like what happened to them and they're trying to figure out where they are and what's going on. And so each episode kind of has this like flashback into one of the characters past to like... Yeah. Sort of the classic lost formula. Yeah, it's very, very lost in its formula. 
which sounds like I'm saying it doesn't know what its formula is, but it's the TV <laughs> show Lost. Uh, I guess it has a little bit of shades of alien, and I feel like if I said any more than that, it would be a spoiler. Mm. So I may not say any more than that. Okay. But anyway, it's worth checking out um, if you have YouTube Premium. And I think the production values are very good. The performances are mostly good. Some of the characters are kind of stupid in that they, (laughs) like... It's like they're written to do stupid things to put them in, like, suspenseful situations, you know what I mean? Mm. Which is can be irritating, but I don't know. It's whatever. It's an all right show. Um, The main takeaway is that it's nice that it's, like, this big, um, expensive production. YouTube is kind of going into this, like, let's compete with Netflix and Amazon and start producing, like, high-quality original content. And I think that's interesting. Yeah, it's better than what they originally were doing, which, which was just, like, let's give YouTubers a bunch of money to make movies. And Yeah, exactly. That would blow up in their face. Yeah, like, nobody wants to watch any of that. All of that is dumb garbage content, so... <laughs> um, Zack Smash Brothers comes out next week. It does. Also, Just Cause 4. I... I'm not super... I've never played Just Cause game, but I like watching people play them. Yeah, I was going to say, it kind of reminds me of Mercenaries um, Mm. and, like, Red Faction, but with, um, like, crazy movement mechanics because of, like, you can use, like, a chain... What what is it called? The grapple Yeah, Yeah, you use the grapple to, like, pull yourself way up into the air, and then you use, like, your, your flight suit or whatever to, like... Uh, move really fast and then you can chain that into like your parachute to move a little bit and then you can go back into one of the others so you can kind of pull off these crazy like movement things which is interesting and the explosions and everything but uh, yeah I've not played any of them so I don't know that I I probably will not be picking this up I just know uh, our friend Mike said that he plans to pick it up so maybe we'll hear about it from him Smash Brothers is the way more interesting thing. Yeah, we'll look forward to Smash and Just Cause 4. We might do some videos on those, but uh, I think that about wraps it up for this week. Follow us on Twitter at Starside Cafe and send us an email at starsidecafe at gmail.com. And Aaron, I want you to give me your parting wisdom. Zach, I used to think that the best blizzard that Dairy Queen made was the New York cheesecake, New York strawberry cheesecake. But have you had the new Snickerdoodle Cookie Bites uh, Blizzard? I have not, but it sounds good. Zach, I love Snickerdoodles, and this thing is amazing. Everyone should go out and check out. It's a limited time thing, so it, it will go away. So while it's still here, go to your local Dairy Queen and pick up a Snickerdoodle Blizzard. It will it'll be the best thing you have all day. But Snickerdoodles aren't going away, right? TBD, Zach. We don't know. We're going to find out. (laughs) I hope not, because I also love Snickerdoodles. (laughs) Anyway. Well, we'll see. We'll see next week. Yeah. Thanks a lot, and we'll catch you on the next one. Goodbye. Goodbye.